everybody. Welcome back to Contemplative Knitting. I want to thank everyone who subscribed. Um, I'm so happy that you want to be notified about these little chats of mine around knitting. So thank you very much. And welcome to anyone who's new to the channel. Uh, for those of you, I do have this Afghan hound who um, I'm just going to pick up the camera and see, get, show her off because she just got groomed and she's so pretty. There she is. Hi, Callie girl. Want to get a piece of cheese? Come here. Come here, baby girl. Callie, come. Come. Ah, yes. There she is, American cheese. So they cut her hair so that it doesn't hang in her face. She's got a lot of um, fur that goes on top of the head, and the Afghan look is the center part, what we used to wear in the 70s. She's definitely a cheese hound. Um, I'll give her one more piece and then uh, we're actually up on the second floor of our house on Lake Ontario. There we go girl. And it is a gorgeous day in upstate New York. It's, um, it's almost too light. They're redoing the patio so you can't really see the lake. Maybe if I get a little. Nope. But that's one of the reasons I'm making everyone dizzy. I'm in here is because it is super light so you can see all my cool knitting stuff so thank you Callie for your little appearance uh, let's see what I want to start with okay so I've got some finished objects two of which I finished recently myself um, within the past month and one I've had a while but it's made out of the same kind of yarn so I wanted to show you this Long Beach Poncho Top, which I've had in my stash probably as an unfinished object for hmm, six, seven months, or years, sorry, not months, years. And the reason it sat for so long is because I lost the directions. Now this is, it's so long ago, it was before I downloaded stuff onto a computer. I wasn't a member of Ravelry, so maybe it's 10 years. But I used to travel to Florida every spring for a conference and I always would go to this yarn store in Delray Beach and I walked in one day because Florida yarn stores have very different stuff than up north. I mean they're not knitting with heavy wool so I'm always curious what does the southern yarn stores have. And they had this, the woman when I walked in was actually wearing this piece and she had on um, jeans with a white tank top and then she was wearing this poncho top and this is it it is made from taki yarns ripple and it's a hundred percent cotton the color is dark blue denim and it's just this kind of poncho that you can put on um so you kind of knit a, a big rectangle and cast off and then cast on for the neck hole. And it just sort of flows. Um, it's a little longer in the back than in the front. And it's just a pretty layering piece. And I think for uh, air conditioned, it would be it would be super. You could just walk in and throw this on and it's not wool and it's yeah, I'm trying to let you see kind of what the ribbon yarn looks like. So it is kind of wide and then it has bumps. I saved a sample here so you can see what kind of yarn. It's the ripple. And there is a pattern to it. I, it doesn't really show the pattern maybe quite as much as um, you would think. I probably could have just done garter stitch for the rest of it. But there is a row pattern. So you can see there's there's ridges, ridges on it. So I finally got that done. And um, I was kind of happy that I found the pattern. It was just, I was cleaning out some stuff and lo and behold, there it is. It's like, oh, the stuff does turn up. So yeah, Long Beach Poncho Top by Teresa. And then her last name is C.H. O-R-Z-E-P-A. C-H-O-R-Z-E-P-A. So there, there it is. Now, when I was getting this out, I, I keep all of my knitted things in 
an antique chest of drawers. It's a, it's a dresser. And I found this. And so this is also Ripple. And I'm sorry, I don't know the pattern, which drives me crazy when people show stuff and they don't tell you the pattern. But it, it's, a, it's just a plain old t-shirt. Probably des design it yourself. It's kind of, and you can see same sort of ridges in it made with Ripple. And it's just a plain t-shirt and it's got sort of a open hem and it's that cotton. So it's a tank top. There's the front and the back with uh, a little bit of uh, open hem at the bottom. So I do like the ripple. It's, it's, um, it's breathes. It's nice. I think it's, it's nice to wear in the summer and certainly is a wonderful summer choice if you're looking for something really lightweight really different to knit up in the summer or if you live in florida or any one of those southern states where it's super hot so again a little ripple so that's a big check from my works in progress because that one's been hanging around and you know how you have stuff hanging around and there's you're stuck or there's something missing or whatever and i just I've done so much knitting on that thing and it's and it's not easy to knit with the ripple because of the different widths so you know you bring it around it gets caught it's it's an effort I mean it's not super TV knitting where you you can't really pay attention you can split the yarn so you so I I've done a lot of knitting I just couldn't bear to throw it out or get rid of it and that would have killed me you know the second you throw something out don't you find what you needed oh yeah yeah it's like give away a piece of clothing to the goodwill and then the event finally comes that you would wear it to and it's ugh, I have that stuff happen. I'm sure everybody else does too. Oh, excuse me, I'm gonna sneeze. Uh. Ooh, I got that. I think I got some of the cotton in my nose. This is something that's also been in my stash for a very long time. I went to Vermont to a yarn store where the woman had an entire wall of Shibui Knits yarn. Uh, it's a company, Shibui, and I fell in love with the yarn. But my husband was with me. It was expensive. I couldn't quite make a decision in the time frame I had of what I wanted to make and I always regretted not getting any of that yarn. That yarn store was in Manchester, Vermont. I have no idea if it's still there or not, but it was kind of um, back in a corner and I just love the Shibui knits. So I got a gift certificate and I had some extra money and I thought, you know, I'm going to get on Shibui knits and I'm going to buy some yarn and I'm going to make something. So I chose a pattern called the Virga Lightweight Cardigan. V-I-R-G-A. Virga Lightweight Card Cardigan by Jennifer Miller. And um, it just kind of looked cool. And it the pattern was on the Shibui Knit website. And uh, it was made of two different kinds of yarn. And I would call this luxury yarn. Uh, one is a fingering weight yarn, this, which, and I just love the color. You can kind of see uh, it's just really beautiful and fine. And this is an extra fine merino, 60% extra fine merino and 40% mulberry silk in the color Twilight. So it's um, Shibui Knits and um, yeah. And the what they call this base is Lunar. And then you pair it with this. And you can already see the halo. And this is Tweed Silk Cloud, which is made up of 65% silk and 35% kid mohair, also in the color Twilight. So when you have the two of them together, I mean, they're very, the colorway is, is, is very similar. But they're both um, incredibly soft. Both of them are incredibly soft. So um, 
the construction of this sweater is something very different I had never done before. So what you do is you start with the uh, sleeve and, and you knit the sleeve. I've been wearing this a lot. I don't have a lot of cardigans. I don't make a lot of cardigans, but now I'm on a cardigan kick because at my advanced age, I get cold, um, especially in air conditioning. And I just want something light and soft to throw on. And it, it, this is this is a perfect thing for that. So you start with the sleeve and I did them in, um, started with double pointed needles. And you start knitting the sleeve and you use two strands of the Lunar and then you start increasing and then you use one strand of the Lunar and one strand of the Tweed Silk Cloud. So you just keep knitting and knitting and I, eventually I got the circular needles and you just keep increasing and keep increasing and keep increasing. So that's what you do and then you get to a certain point and you, you knit the other sleeve. So you just start completely over, follow the same directions, and knit, knit the other sleeve. And eventually you get two sleeves up to a, a point where, and then you join them together in the back. Like these are the two sleeves. So eventually you stop knitting in the round and start knitting back and forth. So you're knitting back and forth and then you uh, these are the increases you can see the increases so there's the sleeve and then you see the increases going all the way up and at one and then you stop knitting in the round and you start knitting back and forth and you do that for two sleeves and you do a three needle bind off and you join the two sleeves together then you do a shawl collar so I've got these two sleeves joined together. You can see. I mean, I had no idea how this was going to come out. And then you, you end up, you can knit a shawl collar. And what, you know, it's a little bit, it's a little bit funky right there. I have to see what I can do about that. It looks a little funky, but you don't really see it when you're wearing because the shawl collar falls off of it. So it becomes a shrug. You can see how light and airy it is. Oh, this is so soft. So the um, the collar kind of goes like that. And you can see the sleeves. And they're joined at the back. It's a little like bat wings. And it kind of hits me right there. And it's just like wearing a cloud. Oh, this combination of yarn is incredible. I've worn it a lot. I'm, I'm already worried I might get some pilling because uh, it's just it's just the perfect thing. It's perfect. It's, you know, it, it just feels soft and light and it's airy and I think you can see how airy it is. So I'm super happy as podcasters say about their knitting. I'm super happy that this came out the way it did and it's just this wonderful light airy mohairy soft. So I'm, I'm very excited about that. So those three things are my finished objects. Uh, I have, I probably can, I, I don't think I've confessed the real number, but I have a lot of works in progress, which I did create a spreadsheet after watching a podcaster suggests that and I've organized them all and the plan was to really kind of get some of the summer things done but I've had two uh, things kind of well one thing come up so my husband and I went down to San Antonio simply because we'd never been there I'd never been there he was there on a business trip and loved the river walk and so he wanted we were thinking I wanted to get out of the cold in the beginning of June in upstate New York. Um, and I did because when we hit San Antonio, it was about a hundred degrees and it was humid, but in the shade of the river walk, it was still great. So we had a great time. We went there, we went up and 
went into some caves, we went to some missions. It was just a very relaxing and of course I had to go to a yarn store. So I went to Unraveled, it's called Unraveled and it's in San Antonio and they it's a great store. They have a wonderful selection of yarn. They had a couch when you walk in so your husband can sit, play on his phone, be happy, not realize how much time is going by. And then thankfully one of his relatives called. He hadn't talked to him in a long time so he stepped out and he was out for a long time which gave me plenty of time to kind of look around and I, if you've noticed my knitting, I'm a very, I wear black, I wear blue, I, I don't really have wild colors. But when I go out of town to a yarn store, I really like to get something that is only kind of original to the area as kind of a souvenir. So I was attracted to something I, I'm not even remotely typically attracted to. And um, it was this yarn. I mean, look at that. It's crazy. Um, and it's done by a local yarn dyer. And her company is Euphoria Knits. And this color is Rum Runner. I mean, how can you not love that? Um, it's in her Frenzy. That's the yarn is called Frenzy. And it's... 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon. It's a four ply sock yarn and I got 100 grams of this. So I knew I wasn't going to make socks with it. So I thought, you know, I don't, I, so I bought another skein of yarn. Maybe I've been looking at Gigi made it a lot and loving her orange, right? But orange is really not my color. But I bought this this orange. It's it's a uh, it's definitely a neon orange. It's reading a little bit there. That's more true to color. It's also Euphoria Knits. So this hand dyer, and I love the name. It's also Frenzy, which is the sock yarn, the four ply sock yarn, um, 85% superwash, 15% merino, 100 gram balls. Both of them are, and um, 437 yards. So the colorway for this is, is pyromania. So I guess that certainly works with this very fiery ball of yarn. So I bought the two and I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with them. And um, last year, I think, or maybe two years ago, I bought the Rocket T pattern. Everybody was kind of making the Rocket T pattern and it's R-O-C-K. Rock It T T E E by Tannis Lavelle L A V A L L E, and I never made it. And it's a, a the pattern has like a combination of a mohair stripe and then a fingering stripe. And I decided I would do I would make it with these stripes, these two balls of yarn, and it's a V neck done from the top down. So um, I've been kind of working on that. So it's going to be something. So I'm doing about eight rows of the orange and then eight rows of the uh, colored yarn. There's a lot, there's more green in it. Sorry, my nose is itching from the mohair. There's more green in the um, the colored yarn than I than, than it looks when it's caked. So it's a little different, but um, I'm not sure that the camera's really doing it justice. I think it's gonna be cool. So definitely fun. I think maybe with a black skirt or with jeans or, yeah. I have a black, uh, what do they call those things, squirt. So it could be fun with that. So that's uh, my fun work in progress. And I just separated for the sleeves. I got my little v-neck going on there. So now I just knit 15 inches down from the 
from this from the arm. So this is this is my TV knitting now. So that is my rocket tee. Now, um, I was, you know, I so that's a new cast on, new yarn, bought everything else. So the uh, Shibui knits had been sitting in my stash. So that was a got got another one checked off out of the stash. Got the poncho checked off out of the stash. So that's two down, one new one. Um, the other thing I had sitting in my stash was I, when I went to um, Sew Green, which is sort of the used yarn store where people bring their stuff, I got this Angel, Debbie Bliss Angel yarn, which is 75% mohair, 24% silk. So 75% mohair, 24% silk. And I was going to do... Um, I got, they had three skeins of it and I found a pattern for like a cowl that you knit on size 10 needles and it's kind of, but I don't know, white yarn and a cowl makeup, you know, how that might go. So it's kind of been sitting in the stash and I probably shouldn't have bought it because, but it was so cheap and it's just sort of such a cool, fluffy, very, very thin yarn. Um, let me just show you. It's just super thin and got this beautiful halo and it's soft. So I was, most of my social media is knitting. So I'm constantly looking at knitting, which I love. So I was, I, I don't know if it was Facebook or Instagram, but I saw an ad for the Phantom Fuzz. That's the name of the sweater, Phantom Fuzz, F-U-Z-Z. -Z. Well, I don't know who the designer is, but it's on Ravelry. So if you are on Ravelry, or maybe you can just search the internet for Phantom Fuzz. And it's a, a, a long sleeve V-neck sweater made of this stuff. And it's a cover-up. It's certainly not for warmth. It's made on... I think I'm using ten and a half needles and it's super cool. I mean, it looked amazing in the picture. I, I was, oh my God, I want to make that. So I looked at the amount of yarn I have and I'm pretty sure I've got enough to do it. It's a very, very cool pattern. I have um, started it. So the cast on, so you can see it, this is going to be, it's, it's very delicate. It's just a cover up like you put it on again, like in some air conditioning and obviously over something. <laughs> so the cast on is a I cord cast on and you use two strands held together and it makes a very cool finished bottom. And I think it's going to help keep it down. So and then it's one strand. That's the back or the front rather. And then I'm finishing up, I think I've got two more inches to do on the back, because then you knit the back, and then the front, you do, um, you're do. you going to shape the V-neck. So this is this should be longer. You're going to shape the V-neck on the front, and then you knit the sleeves. And then you can just wear it. Like, I could throw it on over this uh, black tank top, and, you know, it's, I, it, it's beautiful. I mean, it's light, and it's airy. And um, it goes so quickly. I mean, because the gauge is so open and big, I, I, I spent like a, maybe a week and I, then I got absorbed with the rocket tee, but I'm gonna finish this um, quickly. So my only worry about this, of course I gotta have some anxiety about it, right? Um, you saw my dog, she doesn't jump on me anymore. She did when she was a puppy. But sometimes she'll paw, and oh, God forbid, if she pawed me and I'm wearing this, that would just destroy it. Um, so I do have to be careful that I'm not going to have any doggy grandchildren come over that would jump on me when I wear this. But I've seen the, the I looked on the internet and saw people who have made this, and it's just, it's so cool. I just love it. Um, but again, you know, you kind of have to, because it is, 
so thin, the yarn, when you do knit on it, and you can see it, I have to kind of ease it on up onto the needle because the needle's big. And then you, you do have to kind of pay attention that you're not splitting the yarn or you're not missing one. I have done that. I mean, I have to look. Normally when I knit, I don't have to look, but with this, I have to look. So I'm excited about that. And then I remembered in my stash of unfinished objects that I have the same yarn, uh, the Debbie Bliss Angel yarn, um, in a rose color that I have a work in progress. Now this is the back. This is the back. It's also a cardigan. Beautiful shaping on this. Let's see, there's a, there is some problem with the yarn in the back, but it was a, anyway, sometimes there's irregularities in the yarn. I bought this yarn a long, long time ago. It is for the shawl colored jacket collared, not colored, collared jacket from Debbie Bliss's Angel book. Let me show you a picture of it. It is, um, I bought this yarn in Hawaii, in Waikiki. So this is the, it's this one. Tell I don't have a lot of imagination. I got the same color as on the model, which I do a lot. You know, I see a pattern I like I, I have to make it exactly like they have it. Um, I, I would not plan on wearing it with the belt. I would wear it more like this. So I have finished the back and where I left off were the fronts. I was gonna knit them together, but then I got confused with the shaping. And so I have started a front and I'm a little ways down on the front and that's when it got put away and it's been oh my gosh years I think the time when I was in Hawaii for that was maybe 1994 it was either 94 or 2003 either way a long time but because as I said at my advanced age I get cold so this would be another soft fluffy cloud to put on in the air conditioning so my goal is to finish these two angel hair sweaters um, by the end of the summer. And of course the rocket tee. So we'll see where I am when I podcast in July with those three things. Now, um, two more. I have a piece of knitting that is now has been in the naughty corner for a while. Um, ugh, I cannot believe I did this. So I've been dying to make the Miserina uh, since I saw Tracy from the Grocery Girls finish hers. And hers is like a gray with a hot pink. And I thought, oh, I want to do that, but I want to do like a blue with a hot pink. So in October, I allowed myself to buy one sweater quantity of yarn at um, the, the Sheep and Wool Festival Rhinebeck in Rhinebeck, New York, and I bought it. And I've been dying to start the Miserina since then, and I finally started it, I think, in May. And I just kind of was very monogamous. I'm knitting away. I didn't swatch. I always swatch. I did not swatch. I don't know why. I think I was just anxious to start it. And what I said to myself was, hey, I knit gauge. And I do, like 95% of the time. So I decided on the size and I start knitting away. And, you know, I had the little voice in my head saying, yeah, you know, it looks kind of small. And I thought, no, you know, so I, I did, I tried it on because the neck looks small. So I got it over my head. I'm like, okay, fine. So I kept going. And then I, I was watching the Knits and Pieces podcast, these two women um, who are just amazing knitters, and they both had on a Miserina that they'd both made. 
And I'm looking at their sweaters thinking, huh, the pattern on that just looks way bigger than mine. And then it really started to set in that I have a problem. So I got those um, barber cables, you know, where you take your knitting off uh, the needles and you put them on these little cables and then, you know, you can try it on. So here, here it is. You know, as I'm holding it up, it doesn't look too bad, right? Uh, but check it out. I mean, so I measured it. If I continued, it would be a 24 inch chest, which is not me. Um, I love this pattern. Oh, look at that. And it's got cables, which weren't really showing up that, that well in between the, and then there's some lace at the top. I mean, this pattern I think is, is amazing. I'm not, not super happy with the, um, definition of the, there's cables in between. Yeah, you can, you really can't see them. I don't know if that'll change when I go with the bigger, I mean, you know, obviously the lace will block out. That'll change when I make the right size and use the right needles. So I'm going to have to take it out. That's a lot of, that's a real bummer. I love this. I'm really disappointed. <laughs> so it's been sitting in the naughty corner because I wanted to show you how much I'd done before I took it out. Now that I've shown you, I will take it out. Not sure when I'm going to do that though, because I'm, <sighs> it's a lot of work. Do that color work, which I enjoy, but anyway, it's been sitting long enough. That I think I've gotten through the pain. So, naughty corner knitting. And one last thing today I want to show you is my dream knitting, which is, I don't know, I had a disappointment. Now I can't even remember <laughs> what it was. So I, again, scrolling social media knitting, and I saw the Remy camisole, which is a ribbed camisole and um, made out of cashmere. So I decided to, um, to make that. And I bought myself some cashmere yarn because that's kind of, I needed, I needed something. So I just want to show you what the Remy camisole looks like. It's, it's beautiful. Um, it's, not my favorite kind of knitting because I'm not that into ribbing and the whole thing is ribbing. There it is. But the cool thing about it is um, it, it, it's got negative ease and the ribbing like creates that negative ease. And obviously I'm not going to wear that at my age by itself, but it's something I want to wear underneath things because it's cashmere. And of course, I'm a blue person. So it's the Cardiff Cashmere Classic. And this is 100% cashmere. Um, oh my gosh, it's oh, super nice. I got six balls. Um, I may not need all of them. Oh, and they even give you a little tag you can put in your, you can sew it in your sweater. Isn't that cool? So I got six balls. If I have some left over, maybe I'll make a, a Arctic scarf or something decorative with it, depending on what I end up with. So that's my dream knitting, which I'm really excited about. So that's a lot of knitting. Oh, and I have one other thing. This is hysterical. I have this pillow that I made. Check it out. It's a fisherman's knit pattern. Isn't that gorgeous? And I just knit a plain back. So this was a sweater. Well, you could tell. <laughs> I put ribbing on. 
So this was the ribbing. This was going to be a sweater for my husband. And I held it up to him, like underneath the arm. And I was kind of done. I wanted to shape the armholes. And uh, he said it wasn't long enough. So it went in the naughty corner for a long time. And at that point, you know, he finally admitted to me that he gets super hot in heavy sweaters. And I thought, what am I going to do with that thing? It sat in a basket probably 18 years. And I thought, you know, I can't just unravel it. It's been like that for 18 years. So I decided to make a pillow out of it. And, I, and I'm happy. I, you know, it's kind of cool. I look at it. It reminds me of his mistake in telling me it wasn't long enough. But it's probably good I didn't do it because he just uh, gets too hot. Anyway, well, I have a lot of knitting, obviously. I have a lot of works in progress that um, I uh, need to finish up. But this is the, the summer knitting plan. Um, the Rocket Tee, the Angel Hair stuff. Maybe I'll swatch for the Remy um, camisole. So that's the plan, but um, we're going to Charleston to see one of our sons on July 4th in the RV with three children and my son and his wife, my husband and I, and the Afghan hound. And then we're coming back and then the summer starts and because we live on the lake, we just have guests all the time through August. And in September, the plan is to go climb the Dolomites. Um, we're doing a hut to hut hike uh, for seven days starting September 14th. Probably not going to bring any knitting on that because space in my pack is going to be limited. So I think we just bring a sleeping bag liner and we sleep in bunk houses um, along the way. And I am training for that. So back to running, back to the gym. So that's uh, the summer. It's going to go very quickly. Um, so we'll see how much I get done. Um, in the car, you know, I drive the RV about half the time. And um, my husband drives half the time, so if I'm not too nervous, we're not going through the Jersey barriers with about an inch on each side. We have a Class A. It's 33 feet long, and we pull a Jeep usually. So, um, yeah, it can be a little hairy. So if I'm relaxed, I may knit. At night, I usually try and knit. So I'm, I'm pretty sure I can get that rocket tee done. That's just going to be mindless knitting, even when I'm stressed, it helps unstress me. So a little long today with all this stuff, but I hope to see you in July and we'll see what I have to show. I always have stuff from the archives. So thanks again for watching. If, if you enjoy this kind of chit chat, feel free to subscribe. I also have a blog uh, called Contemplative Knitting where I talk about a lot more things than just knitting. I talk about um, kind of spiritual stuff. So check that out. And thanks again for coming by. Bye.